changed in the life of the Dragonborn, Oriel Freepwood, a Redguard warrior blessed with the soul of a dragon, not to mention a rather badass set of armor and weapons that he'd made from killing other dragons. Oriel had put the Dark Brotherhood out of business, become the Archmage of the College of Winterhold, become the Master of the Thieves Guild, and destroyed the evil Alduin, saving the entire world from his evil wrath. Oh, and he still found the time to join a group of vampire killers, acquire himself an undead horse, and stop a plot to block out the sun by a pack of bloodsuckers. Oriel decided that it was time to settle down from his life of adventure, and despite the fact that he already owned a house in virtually every major hold in Skyrim already, he decided to build three more houses, mainly because he wanted the achievement and the game of points for doing so. Anyway, Oriel moved himself and his feisty warrior wife, Mjol the Lioness, into one of these grand houses. And together, they filled their new home with trophies reminding them of their previous adventures, along with house cows, bards, and noisy dysfunctional children. They also had so many weapons stored there that if social services existed in Skyrim, they would have been round quite a few times by now. So it's just as well that Oriel got a chance to swing those weapons around again during a routine visit to Windhelm, when three masked rogues approached him in the street and decided to lob some fireballs at him, after basically stating, you're not the Dragonborn, some other bloke is. Understandably, Oriel was a tad miffed at this, and after reading a note found on the body of one of the now-dead cultists, decides to jump on the same boat they arrived in and make his way over to Solstein. This other bloke claiming to be Dragonborn, apparently named Mirak, needs a stern talking to, and quite possibly a Dragonbone sword to the face. Thus begins Skyrim's new piece of DLC, Dragonborn, which will make for a lovely nostalgia trip for anyone who has played the Elder Scrolls Free, Morrowind, and its own expansion pack, Blood Moon, as that too was set on the island of Solstheim. Upon getting there, no one seems to know who this Mirak person is, but they all agree that the name sounds familiar, as if it was from a dream. Hmm, curiouser and curiouser. I'd love to investigate this further, but I'm already getting distracted by the miscellaneous quests in order to ask some old blood to give me back the pickaxe he borrowed, and distributing samples of beer for the local pub owner. I also get mating with the captain of the guard team, Solstheim, who hilariously enough speaks with a thick Yorkshire accent. I'm sure I'd make it off this farm alive. Wish I could have said the same for my man. After helping out the Redoran guards fight off a pack of ash spawn zombies and killing the leader of their group, which is a general who apparently died years ago but was brought back to life using something called a heartstone, I find myself stumbling across a shrine that's been built by some of the people I'd spoken to in the town previously, but they now seem to be in a trance. Even worse, later on I find myself in a trance as well, working on the same monument. Luckily, I'm able to break free from this mind control. But the question remains, what the bloody hell is going on around here? Upon hearing of another monument called Mirak's Temple, I naturally guess that this is the same Mirak that sent his altar boys to Skyrim to try and give me a kick in. So I journey there only to find more people working away in a trance. Whilst they are teamed with a woman called Free, who is from the tribe of Skarl people nearby. Upon entering Mirak's Temple and reading a mysterious black book, things soon begin to get very interesting. It turns out that Mirak is the original Dragonborn, the first Dovahkiin, and he more than makes for a passing resemblance to the Witch King in Lord of the Rings. He's not very happy that someone else has joined what he thought was an exclusive Futhro Dark Club, so now it's up to you to give him the good old spanking Dragonborn style that he deserves. Some parts of Solstein with its snow-covered mountains might look familiar to other places you've been to in Skyrim. 
However, the Dark Elf provinces, with its thick layer of ash everywhere and Hobbit-esque looking houses, make for some interesting new sights. Not to mention the Smurf-like Mushroom Village, where a somewhat eccentric Dark Elf wizard, who for some reason reminds me of Richard O'Brien from the Crystal Maze, wants you to help him with his research. However, one thing I noticed here is that there doesn't seem to be any stables in Solstheim, so there's nowhere that you can acquire a horse. You may very well be faced with the prospect of navigating your way around the island on foot. And although the island of Solstheim isn't another massive world like what Skyrim was, it's still not a small island either. It's a good old size. Would it have hurt for them to have included a stable at Raven Rock so you could have bought yourself a horse to help navigate your way around this place? My advice, to be honest, if you've got the Dawnguard DLC as well, is to pop over to the Soul Cane and get yourself the undead horse, Ardvac. That way, wherever you are, you can summon a horse for you to ride on, anytime, anywhere. This comes in particularly useful if you find yourself over encumbered, as I usually do, with some of the new armour and weapons that you'll find here. Some of the new armour types include Bone Mold, Chitin and Carved Nordic. Not to mention a treasure hunt to find Death Brand armour, which is made from a new building material. A sort of enchanted form of ice, which is harder than steel and can be forged into deadly new armour and weapons. It's particularly good if you enchant these new weapons with frost damage as well, as they can end up being even more powerful than the Dragonbone weapons that were introduced in Dawnguard. Dragonborn is certainly going to give you more of a challenge than what Dawnguard did. I romped through Dawnguard fairly quickly to be honest, and as I mentioned in my review of that particular piece of DLC, it's possible that I may have been too powerful for the game at that point. However, my level 60 Redguard warrior clad in dragon armour did get presented with quite a few challenges with the Dragonborn expansion. Dragonborn is probably best suited for someone who has played Skyrim for a while and got themselves levelled up to a decent point and acquired some decent armour and weapons. Those who travel there without much in the way of preparation are probably going to struggle a lot more. Particularly when you start reading the black books and find yourself transported to the realms of Apocrypha where all kinds of tentacled nasties are lurking to make your visit there a very uncomfortable one. But it's not just in the realm of the Necronomicon-like black books that you'll find new enemies to face. There's also the aforementioned zombie-like ash creatures, along with the annoying little buggers that are the Reeklings, that basically look like gremlins but with beards. These guys can usually be seen around on a wild boar into battle, lobbing spears in your general direction. Now, when these guys were seen on the trailer, it was assumed that spears would be a new weapon in the game. Unfortunately, whilst the Reeklings do indeed use spears to effect either as a melee or a throwing weapon, you can't do the same once you've killed them and looted their bodies. You can only use Reekling spears as arrows for your bow, and not particularly powerful arrows either. Chances are the arrows that you're already carrying will do more damage than the spears, so you probably won't bother picking them up at all. This seems like a wasted opportunity to me. However, they are a friendly tribe of Reeklings that you can become allies with, and you can even get a Reekling to join you on a quest as a follower. What's good about getting a Reekling as a follower is that they don't actually count as a follower, they count as like a sort of pet. So you can have a Reekling knocking about with you, as well as a follower as well. But the good thing is about having a Reekling as a pet, is that unlike a pet, it can actually carry some of your items for you, like armour and weapons. It also makes me think that maybe I should take one of these Reeklings home with me to actually have as a pet. Because let's face it, I've not really had much luck in the way of pets in my home. Uh, my little boy's uh, pet Skeeva was, was accidentally brutally killed uh, during a Skeeva infestation in the cellar. And uh, as for Barbus, the talking dog, well, uh, he's not been doing a lot of talking recently, ever since he had his little operation. These days he just tends to give me a look of utter disdain before he then gives a sad huff and goes back to licking the loose bag of skin where his balls used to be. Although you'll find plenty of side quests and new dungeons to explore, the main quest is the highlight of the DLC. Even if you do spend a bit too much time pissing about with control cubes and water levels in Dwarven Ruins. However, Dragonbone's supposed crown jewel, the ability to tame and ride dragons, turns out to be its biggest disappointment. You won't get to do this until right at the end of the main quest line, as you'll need to acquire three different shouts of power first. This looks so good in the trailer, and indeed the first time you climb onto a dragon's neck is exciting stuff. 
but best of luck trying to get the scaly-winged bugger to do anything useful. Chances are you'll soon get fed up of his awkward combat targeting and glitchy flight patterns, and you'll just want to get off the bloody thing just so you can take out your enemies on your own two feet, rather than getting your dragon to bite or burn them. It's not as if you can control your dragon in the same way you can control your horse when you're riding on it either. I can't see myself riding dragons all that much through the rest of the game to be honest, other than getting the achievement for doing it five times. So, when we finally come to the big boss himself, Mirak, the original Dragonborn, the mirror image of you, he's certainly a much more difficult foe to overcome than either Alduin or Lord Harkon was. Mirak also has some of the same dragon shouts as you. He's got himself a couple of decent weapons, which you can acquire yourself upon defeating him, and it also helps him that the area you fight him in is surrounded by dragons. And Mirak has no qualms about killing one of his dragons just so he can absorb its soul and get himself a health recharge. A couple of times when I thought I had defeated him, the cheeky bugger then went and absorbed another dragon soul to bring his health back up to the full amount. My advice before you go into that last battle is to make sure you've got yourself some decent weapons and armour. And make sure you've got plenty of health potions, because you're going to need them. And if you think Mirak is tough, also look out for a warrior known as the Ebony Warrior, which you can only fight when you get to level 18 above. He will certainly provide you with quite a hefty challenge. All in all, is Dragonborn any good? The answer is a resounding yes. If you've got Skyrim and you really need another excuse to play it for another couple of dozen hours, then Dragonborn certainly gives you the perfect excuse to do so. It's a lot bigger and it has a lot more content than the Dawnguard DLC. In fact, I'd say that it's the best DLC that's come out for Skyrim so far. There's a couple of moments where I felt that it could have been much more than what it was, using Reekling spears as low-powered arrows rather than as actual spears, dragon riding, a bit of a disappointment, maybe a bit more thought could have gone into the layout of the island, you know, no stables, no horses to be found anyway, but these are just minor quibbles to be honest with you. In conclusion, Dragonborn gives you even more things to see and do in Skyrim, a game that in our household we've continued to play even after a year of it being released. There's not many games out there that continue to offer more incentive to play one year later, and I hope that Bethesda keep those DLC packs coming. Considering that Bethesda have recently trademarked the name Redguard, in the same way they trademarked the names Dawnguard, Halffire and Dragonborn, before those DLC packs were announced, it's entirely possible that another expansion may already be on the way. I can't wait. The Big Daddy D gives Dragonborn a resounding thumbs up.